Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, and we're going to talk about uh, New Zealand and the terror attack there and its greater kind of uh, ramifications for new right politics. Join us for part two of our discussion. Obviously, uh, the event in New Zealand w was tragic, and I, um, in my previous video, I condemned it and, and stated my uh, opinions on the, some of the wider ramifications, but there also was some very strange things that came of that uh, attack. One of the weirdest things that came out was the New Zealand Prime Minister decided to um, essentially dress up as, uh, wear, the, uh, wear the veil, what's, what's that called again? Um, the hijab, wear the hijab. And, um, um, as someone pointed out in a Facebook meme, it's a little bit like someone uh, might have, you know, I don't know, walked into a bar in um, Southern California and shot up, say, 30 Mexicans, and um, Trump puts on a sombrero and then runs around, you know, and get for photos opportunity dressed up as a Mexican. I think that would be utterly fucking ridiculous, and I think the press would justifiably crucify Donald Trump if he did that, and I have no idea why the New Zealand Prime Minister basically doing some kind of Justin Trudeau cosplay. You know, she's one of these globalist um, politicians. You know, I mean, Justin Trudeau is famous for going to, you know, like India and getting dressed up as like a, a swami or, you know, like he, he literally wears, he, I don't know what he does when he goes to Germany, maybe gets all dressed up in lederhosen and starts slapping on his thighs. He's a complete fucking idiot. Um, but this ridiculousness of the New Zealand prime minister wearing a hijab, um, I mean, if she did it once, Maybe when she was visiting a mosque, but she's been wearing it for a whole friggin' week everywhere she's been going. It's like she's converted. She probably is going to convert, you know, to Islam after this event. It's so ridiculous. I mean, this is, I mean, it, it's utterly ridiculous. Um, I think it's insulting to the Muslim community. I mean, I don't know what they think of it. Maybe they think it's a good thing because it, it, it signals submission to their kind of ideas and ideology. I'm not sure. But uh, I think it's utterly ridiculous what's going on with that. And, um, you know, it, it's kind of, uh, what's the word? Um, it's a symptom of a, of a broader illness within Western civilization, the way we're sort of so slowly giving in to this. I mean, I don't know if everyone knows, why are so many, why is there so much Muslim immigration to Western civilization? Well, in my personal opinion, this is something of a conspiracy theory, but I believe the Saudis have been offered um, some Western countries, and I would call this the Saudi agenda. I believe that Israel is expanding into the Middle East. It's, it wants to expand into Syria. It wants to attack Iran. It probably wants to take a large part of the Middle East um, for itself. And I imagine some kind of deal has been done with the Saudis. And I imagine the Saudis have been offered countries in Europe, probably France, probably New Zealand for all I know. But I know that the thing driving this mass immigration to Western civilization is the Saudis. And the Saudis are also deeply connected to September 11 and the event on September 11. You've got to remember that, like, of the 30 people who were the terrorists who flew the planes into the buildings, 28 of them were Saudi citizens. I mean, when I saw that on the front cover of the Herald Sun, I thought we're going to war with Saudi Arabia. But no, we didn't. We went to war with Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, Syria, Yemen, Pakistan. I mean, every other country just about, except Iran, which is obviously next. And, um, and Saudi Arabia, which is, of course, the one country that seemed to actually be guilty for it, it's the one country we're not attacking. So this is a very strange um, series of events that seem to me to be, um, uh, again, part of some what I would call the, the secret kind of secret globalist agenda behind what's going on. And the way our politicians are all bending over backwards to, uh, to like, you know, dress up in, in, in Islamic garb is utterly ridiculous. I mean, you know, if there's a... And this is another important thing. Um, it, it, why the attack in New Zealand was horrible, there have been many, many, many attacks on Christians around the world uh, by radical Islamic terrorism. And if you want to look them up online, you will get a list as long as your arm. There's at least 500 or 100 to 500 attacks that you could list in, in, in Africa, in the Middle East, uh, in, in Egypt and parts of Egypt, even in Europe, there are... Uh, there are churches that are under attack or they've been vandalized. Even in France recently, Breitbart reported the whole number of churches, beautiful churches in France were being vandalized and uh, Christians have been attacked, priests have been attacked. So, I mean, this is this, it's a constant almost religious war that's been going on. Um, you know, so you've got to see these things in perspective. And the way that uh, our politicians only seem to care, I mean, and why do our politicians, you know, care about the event in New Zealand, but don't care about, I, I don't know, say a church in the Philippines being, 100 people being killed by radical Islamic terrorists in the Philippines, which happened not that long ago. 
How come there was hardly anything about that in our news? And yet there's 50, obviously, they are both equal tragedies. But why does one receive huge amount of media attention and the other none, virtually none? Or maybe a small bit of news at the end of the ABC. Oh, and by the way, this happened. And then, and now for the weather. You know what I mean? Like this, the way that the, mani the media manipulates our attention, the way the media manipulates towards this globalist politics and this globalist agenda is yet another thing driving us towards this 1984 um, nightmare world that we're hopefully all trying to avoid. And also there are some conspiracy theories floating about about this attack. One of the reasons they say the video has been banned is that there are many weird inconsistencies in it. I have not studied the video and I believe that's something independent journalists should study and also um, obviously various police force from around the world including Russian police force who might actually tell us the truth about what happened in, in New Zealand because I suspect what happened in New Zealand was a globalist event and that this fellow who attacked, this Tarrant fellow, could be what's called an agent provocateur. Now, an agent provocateur is essentially a double agent. You know, he would be someone, for example, who uh, is not of the politics he proclaims to be, that he's actually an agent for a foreign body. It could be, it could be the Saudis, it could be Israel, it could be another agent, could be China even. And of course, in, in the manifesto, he did praise China greatly. So you need to look into this. And uh, ASIO and these other kind of bodies need to look into this stuff. Um, so in my next video, I will talk about conspiracy theories and uh, talk about some general ideas about that. But um, OK, that's it for today. And uh, enjoy this video and um, about a grim topic. But I do think we need to face some um, uncomfortable uh, questions about difficult topics. Thank you for watching.